Since the beginning of history, the points of light in the sky have captivated us, particularly those special ones who mysteriously seem to wander. We call them planets. And upon learning that our planet is only one of many in our solar system, how could merely observing these points of light from home ever have been enough? Half a century ago, we began the exploration of all the planets, making ever more distant journeys. Each new world, from Mercury to Pluto, revealed its own star's smartling complexity, character, and unimagined beauty. Named after the ancient Roman goddess of beauty, Venus is known for its exceptional brightness in the night sky. But behind this facade is a world of storms and infernos unlike anywhere else in the solar system. This is Venera 4, a Soviet space probe moments away from attempting the first landing on another planet, Venus. At the time, very little was known about this mysterious planet, but scientists believed that under its thick layer of cloud was a world not too different from Earth, with a similar one-bar atmosphere and Earth-like temperatures. But little did they know what kind of world this poor little space probe was about to enter. As it hit the atmosphere at 40,000 km per hour, its parachute deployed and the antenna started sending back data. At first, the atmospheric pressure was similar to Earth's. But as it descended further into the atmosphere, the readings started to go crazy. One atmosphere quickly became 10, 10 became 20. Then suddenly, the space probe cracked open and all communication was lost. The last bit of data it sent back revealed an atmosphere that was 22 times thicker and 250 degrees Celsius hotter than Earth. The atmospheric pressure is a frightening 92 times out of Earth's surface, enough to crush a nuclear submarine. Even the stars are lost to this world due to a thick veil of poisonous sulfuric acid clouds. If we did not have a Venus in our solar system, we would not dare to imagine it. Between 1961 and 65, the Soviet Union made a remarkable five failed attempts to get a mission of their own to Venus. From 1967 up to the breakup of the Soviet Union, two successful Soviet missions helped transform our understanding of this mysterious planet. The Soviets had now mastered the art of getting to Venus, but the world still had no idea what this crazy world actually looked like. And so, it was up to Venera 9 to take the first pictures of Venus. The lander was completely redesigned once more, instead of using parachutes for the final descent. Venera 9 had a large air brig to slow it down, and a set of landing legs to absorb the impact. But the most important feature on Venera 9 was the camera system. It had two movable cameras on either side of the lander that could take a 360-degree panorama of the surrounding landscape. All in all, the Soviets landed on Venus eight times, with each mission sending back incredible images and scientific data about this mysterious planet. To the ancient Romans, the planet Mars was symbolic of blood and war. But to many people today, the red planet may hold the key for a bright new future for humanity. One of the most striking features of Mars is its thin atmosphere, composed mainly of carbon dioxide with traces of nitrogen and argon. The Martian atmosphere is less than 1% as dense as Earth, with an average temperature 
80 degrees Fahrenheit. Mars is a frozen world. Mariner 4 became the first spacecraft to fly by Mars, revealing a dry cratered world. The dream of landing on Mars persisted, but Mars was far more hostile and unforgiving than we had imagined. On August 20, 1975, Viking 1 lifted off from Cape Canaveral atop a Titan 3E rocket. Its destination was 249 million kilometers away. After a quiet interplanetary cruise of 10 months, Viking 1 entered orbit around Mars on June 19, 1976. And on July 20, 76, the lander separated from the orbiter and after three hours of descent, landed on the Martian surface. Very soon, the first splendid images and a whole series of chemical and physical data of the Martian soil began to arrive on Earth. It was the first time ever that a probe sent back to Earth the appearance of a Martian landscape as it could be seen by a terrestrial explorer. Viking 1 wasn't just a spacecraft, it was a symbol of human ingenuity, curiosity and perseverance. Born from primordial stardust, 4.5 billion years ago, Jupiter was the solar system's first planet. The Greeks called him Zeus, the Romans Jupiter. On December 3, 1973, Pioneer 10 made history, flying within 200,000 kilometers of the gas giant. It sent back stunning images of Jupiter's swirling clouds its great red spot, and its moons. For the first time, humanity saw Jupiter in all its glory. The king of the gods hide his nefarious activities behind swirling clouds. Only his wife, the goddess Juno, could pierce the veil of mists to catch him in the act. NASA's Juno. The Jupiter near polar orbiter left Earth on a mission to peer into the mysterious Jovian atmosphere. It slams into the cloud tops at over 106,000 miles per hour. The probe sensors reveal that hydrogen makes up 90% of Jupiter's atmosphere. Temperatures soar to over 300 degrees Celsius. Winds rage at 400 meter per hour. It's hotter and more turbulent than scientists ever imagined. 58 minutes after entering Jupiter's atmosphere and just 95 miles down the probe vaporizes, leaving most of Jupiter's secrets beyond our reach. In the vast expanse of our solar system, there exists a small mysterious world in the sun's fierce glow. Mercury. For centuries, this elusive planet was a distant dot in the night sky. But in 1974, a groundbreaking mission changed everything. Traveling over millions of miles, Mariner 10 became the first spacecraft to visit Mercury. Over three flybys, Mariner 10 captured the most detailed images of Mercury ever seen. On August 3, 2004, Messenger launched from Earth, beginning a 6.5-year journey through the solar system. Once in orbit, Messenger became the first spacecraft to ever orbit Mercury. Over the course of its mission, it transformed our understanding of this enigmatic planet. Messenger revealed a world marked by intense volcanic activity and an ancient battered surface, 
Its cameras capture detailed images of craters, some more than 4 billion years old. So far, it's only been visited by two spacecraft, Mariner 10 and Messenger. Those missions gave us much of what we know today, but future ventures are in the works with high hopes of revealing more of Mercury secrets. Beyond the inner planets of our solar system lies a world of breathtaking beauty and wonder. Saturn, the giant adorned with rings. Saturn has captivated astronomers and dreamers for centuries, not only for its size, but for its mysterious elegant rings. On September 1, 1979, Pioneer 11 became the first spacecraft to fly by Saturn. As it approached Saturn, the spacecraft began to transmit data that would reshape our understanding of the planet. The images and measurements it sent back revealed a world more complex and beautiful than anyone had imagined. In 2004, Following a seven-year journey through the solar system, Cassini arrived at Saturn. Cassini's instruments allowed scientists to study Saturn's many moons in extraordinary detail. A lone explorer, on a mission to reveal the grandeur of Saturn, its rings and moons. After 20 years in space, Cassini spacecraft is running out of fuel, and so, to protect moon of Saturn, that could have conditions suitable for life. A spectacular end has been planned for this long-lived traveler from Earth. Cassini's grand finale is a brand new adventure, 22 dives through the space between Saturn and its rings. As it repeatedly braids this unexplored region, Cassini seeks new insights about the origins of the rings and the nature of the planet's interior, closer to Saturn than ever before. On the final orbit, Cassini will plunge into Saturn, fighting to keep its antenna pointed at Earth as it transmits its farewell. In the skies of Saturn, the journey ends, and Cassini becomes part of the planet itself. In ancient times, humans studied the night sky and discovered the worlds of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. But beyond this realm of knowledge, another world shined brightly, just waiting to be discovered. The Voyager 2 spacecraft is the only probe to have made close approaches to the two outer ice giants, Uranus and Neptune. In 1986, Voyager approached Uranus. In the distant past, it must have been hit by another massive body that knocked its axis sideways. Uranus has an east and a west pole, and for half its orbit, one side sees continual sun, while the other remains in darkness. It has rings which follow its north-south equator, Voyager 2 discovered 11 new moons and a misaligned magnetic field. Images that the Voyager captured showed Uranus as a bland, featureless planet. As Voyager 2 left Uranus, backlighting from the Sun, revealed two new rings encircling the planet. The spacecraft was now heading toward Neptune, the solar system's last planet. In the three years it would take to get there, ground engineers began preparing for unique challenges.
Neptune is 30 times further from the Sun than the Earth, and the light intensity is 1000 what it is here. For photography, time exposures would be necessary. Yet Voyager 2 was traveling so fast that images would spear without special preparation. Engineers calculated just how much the craft would have to swivel while exposures were made to compensate for the probe's movement. In June 1989, Voyager 2 began returning distant images of Neptune. Across the world, people had realized that the data sent back to Earth by this spacecraft was transforming our understanding of the solar system. Neptune is more conventional planet than Uranus. Its axial tilt is 30 degrees, and it revolves in the same direction as Earth. Voyager 2 measured wind speeds at Neptune in excess of 2,000 km per hour, the fastest in the solar system. There were cirrus clouds in the atmosphere, and the probe recorded pictures of a great dark spot similar to Jupiter's Great Red Spot. Pluto was once considered the ninth planet of our solar system. For over 75 years, Pluto was thought to be a cold, distant and lifeless body. But in 2006, NASA set out to change that. They launched a daring mission to reveal the secrets of this icy dwarf planet, a mission called New Horizons. The fastest spacecraft ever built, it raced toward the edges of our solar system, covering 4.67 billion miles over the course of nearly a decade. But the journey was long and full of challenges. New Horizons traveled faster than any spacecraft before it, at speeds of over 36,000 miles per hour. Yet, even at this speed, the mission would take over nine years to reach Pluto. On July 14, 2015, after years of anticipation, New Horizons finally reached its destination. For the first time in history, a spacecraft flew by Pluto, giving humanity its first close-up views of this mysterious world. The images revealed towering mountains made of ice, vast frozen plains, and strange geological formations. One of the most surprising features was the heart-shaped region. New Horizons didn't just take pictures. It collected vast amounts of data, revealing that Pluto was more complex than anyone had anticipated. Far from being a dead, frozen world, Pluto turned out to be geologically active, with signs of possible past, or even present subsurface oceans. The New Horizons mission didn't just give us a new view of Pluto. It expanded our horizons. It showed us that even the farthest, most distant worlds can surprise us. And it reminded us that, when it comes to exploring the cosmos, we've only just begun. <laughs>